Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about generic types in Python. And <laughs> I've been meaning to do this video for a long time, but I haven't really gotten around to it. So we're going to do it now. Uh, so generics are, or at least the way that I think about them, is there a way to make a type or a function not really care about the underlying types that are being used in it, but forward them along correctly? Maybe that's not a good example. Uh, <laughs> another way to think about it is it's a container type that doesn't need to care about what type it contains. Uh, most of the types in the typing module themselves are actually generic. So if you see, for instance, list int, uh, this special square bracket syntax denotes that it's generic. Uh, a list is a container class. And in this case, this, this is a list that has a bunch of integers in it. Uh, and this is the generic type that's being used there. Uh, generics in Python, well, generics in other languages are also fairly common. So for instance, if you're in C++, I guess they're not called generics in, in C++, and they're, they're actually implemented very differently. Uh, but in C++ and in a lot of other languages, you will see angle brackets instead of square brackets to represent their generic or template type. Uh, you know, Java C Sharp also does the same. I don't remember Go's syntax. It's also fairly new, so I'm not familiar with it yet. But uh, you can kind of, you know, if you're familiar with generics or templates in other languages, uh, this should be familiar in Python as well. Now note that you know templates actually do code gen, and in Java they have type erasure. And like, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that happens. And in Python, they're purely at typing time. There's no representation of generics at runtime. So uh, they are just they're just a thing for type checkers and to allow you to write more more correct code. Uh, but anyway, now that we've gone over kind of the the syntax of how you use generics, uh, I wanted to show how you can define some generics. Uh, we're going to set up MyPy to type check some stuff. Let's get that going, and we're going to make a file. So I'm going to start by making a very simple generic function, uh, and then we'll make a generic container class. Uh, we might make a couple of functions, because <laughs> I don't know if the first one's going to go all that well. Uh, let's make a function called double, which takes some value, and we'll, we'll type annotate in a second. But it's just going to return x times 2. Now this function as written can take all sorts of different types. It could contain, it could take integers, floats, complex, even lists and tuples could be passed through here. Uh, so we actually want to say that this function could take any number of types and return the same type back. That's really only going to work if it supports multiplying by integers, and we're going to have to do a bit of work to make that happen. Oh, this is going to be complicated. <laughs> so you would introduce a generic here. Uh, annotations from typing import type var. And the way you make a generic, uh, generics are kind of two parts. You use type variables to represent the substitutable type. So in this case, you know, whatever t we see here will be the same output t that we see here. Uh, you will also use generic if you're making a class that is uh, generic. We're actually not going to be making a class here, but we'll show an example of one later. And you define your type variable by giving it, giving it a name. And the first argument to type var will also be that same name. Um, looks a little bit silly, but this is so the type checker knows what you're doing. Uh, so this is kind of the basics of what we would want to do here. Now, this actually isn't going to work because right now this type variable is unbound, which means it could be any type. Uh, and not all types support this multiplication. So if we were to say, hey, MyPy, tell me what's up with this function, you'll see that it's unhappy because we multiplied t by integer and there's <laughs> a whole bunch of other possibilities that could happen there. Uh, but let's set some of these up. Uh, double, we're going to double a list of things, and we're going to double a integer, and we'll double a float. Just to show that MyPy would uh, eventually give us the right values out here. You can see it knows, but we need to actually constrain this a little bit further so that we don't have a type problem here. And the way you do that actually brings me to the second step, or the second thing about type variables. Oops jumping ahead a little bit, in that you can bind them, which means that any instance of s must be stir or a subclass of stir. Uh, you can also constrain them, uh, which is you can select particular parts of type variables that it can only be those things. Uh, so in this case, you know, a must either be a stir or a bytes. It cannot be any other type. It can't be a subclass of stir, can't be a subclass of bytes. It has to be exactly one of these two things. Uh, and so we're actually going to constrain t in a way that causes it to allow to be multiplied by an integer. Now, this is going to be 
this example is maybe more uh, <laughs> more involved than I wanted it to be. In order to do that, we need a protocol. Uh, so we're gonna do class malt int protocol, and we're gonna define multiplication where uh, x is an integer, and we return. Oh, <laughs> Oh, this gets worse. Um, we also kind of need this self-type, which I was looking at for a different video, but uh, I guess that's here now as well. So this would be a case where self-type would be really useful. Um, let's actually just do this right now. I think it's going to complain at us because um, this actually, this says it returns a protocol, which isn't actually, it doesn't preserve the type. Uh, but let's say we did bound equals malt int. And if we uh, do this now, I say, yeah, incompatible return type got malt int expected t. So we actually lost the typing here on this multiplication. Yes, this example is complicated. So what we actually want to do is say that self is an instance of t, and then this returns t, I think. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so a, a little bit complicated. Um, and a little bit, this is actually circular because T depends on malt int, which depends on T, but uh, don't worry about the details here. Basically, this is saying that there is some type which when it is multiplied by an integer, it keeps the same type. And so that allows all of these reveal types down here to preserve their types. So you can see a list that's doubled is still a list, a int that is doubled is still an int, and a float that's doubled is still a float. So here's kind of a very basic example. Uh, I want to show you another example where we don't have to involve a protocol because this is more complicated than it needs to be. Um, let's implement our own map function, for example. And let's just say that it maps lists to lists. Uh, so if you're familiar with map, uh, the way it actually works is it makes an iterable. So we're going to, I don't know, <laughs> we're going to make it not, so not do that. So let's say... We're taking in a value and we're stringifying it. Uh, and let's say that we uh, convert it back to a list. Just lambda, lambda, I can spell. Uh, so here map takes a function as its first argument, a list as its second argument, and it returns back a new list uh, and the type can change. So we need both an input type and an output type. So we're gonna make two type variables here. In equals type var in. Uh, out equals type var out, and we're going to define our own uh, map function. It's going to take a callable as its first argument. I'm typing import callable, and this callable is going to take the input type and return the output type. So function, which is a callable, which takes the input type and returns the output type. Uh, the second argument is going to be some list. I'm just going to use <laughs> list here. Map can actually support any arbitrary iterable and it returns back an iterable. We're going to do list to list just because it's simpler. Uh, so it's going to be a list of the input type and we're going to return back a list of the output type. And MyPy is smart enough to know that when we pass the right function here, that this type must match this type and this type must match this type. So it basically you know, confers that the, the, the types are consistent throughout the signature. And if we wanted to actually implement this, we would do ret equals list uh, for thing in list ret dot append function thing return ret. And if we did my map of, uh, you know, lambda x to stir x of one, two, three, Print that and reveal type just to show that it works. Uh, oh. Out. Uh, oh, we got one more reveal type down here. <laughs> okay, anyway. So just to show that it, it runs properly, we can convert things to strings. And if we mypy that, uh, list is not defined on line 25. Oh, yeah, I can spell. <laughs> uh, so MyPy knows that because we called this in a particular way, we get a built-in stir as the output. It managed to plumb through those types. Okay, so here's two examples of making a generic function uh, where your inputs and outputs are type dependent and you, know, you don't actually substitute the real types in here, but uh, the time checker does it for you. 
Now I wanted to show you some examples of some generic classes. Now the generic class, you're going to uh, extend from generic. So you'll have class C, generic, and then you'll list your type variables here. So if there was, you know, in and out type, uh, you would do something like this. And that's how you define a generic class. Uh, then throughout the class, you can use these in and out types to you know, interact with things. Usually, when you define a generic class, you will need to use the input and output parameters inside of your constructor. Otherwise, your type checker won't really know what type you have. So for instance, uh, let's say that we were making a frozen dictionary, for instance. It's not going to be a truly frozen dictionary, but it'll be typing frozen, for example. Uh, and so maybe you take it from uh, original dictionary in and out. Uh, Self.dict equals this, and maybe you define hash. Uh, well, let's not do hash because hash is not that interesting, but you would for a frozen dictionary define a hash. Uh, let's say we define get item, which is the bracket access for a dictionary. Uh, your key will be of your input type, and your return value will be your output type. Um, and so you can imagine this is a very, very simple frozen dictionary. So if we would, were to make a d equals f dict of, uh, let's say we map strings to integers, and we did reveal type of d1, uh, this should, uh, mypy should tell us that this is still an integer. And it's able to infer that the key type is str, so it substitutes str here, and it's able to infer that the value type is int. So this, this will be generic of str int, for example. Now, of course, you would fill out the rest of this so that you have a full uh, map. I think, I think I have a frozen dictionary, well, frozen dictionary <laughs> in Babby, which I, yeah, fdict, which is a uh, generic collection here. So you can see that uh, it also takes a mapping as its input here. Uh, get item you know, matches key and value. It also has contains, wrapper, and I didn't bother with hash. Oh, I guess because it gets a hash from object. <laughs> That's kind of funny. I just didn't bother. Which, I, if it's immutable, you can kind of get away with that. Um, <laughs> it's not equatable, though, so... I don't know. Maybe maybe I should have done this a little bit differently. But anyway, here's a here's a bad frozen dictionary. We're not going to talk about variants. <laughs> variants is in a whole more complicated topic that <laughs> I don't really want to get into. But um, there is invariant, contravariant, and covariance, and some complicated type theory. I'm not going to get into it. It has to do with immutability and other stuff. And I look it up every time and I don't remember it right now. So we're not, we're not going to get into it. Um, but yeah, that's how you make a class that's generic. Uh, and this is how you make some functions that are generic. Hopefully this introduced the concept. I realize this is a pretty information dense video. So feel free to pause or rewatch parts that you missed. Uh, hopefully this makes sense. And uh, if there's additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.